Welcome back to another video on Gears Law Studios, and today I'm going to be showing you how to build yourself an underwater fortress. So, without further ado, let's investigate how we'd go about this. And first off, we have the pallet. This will involve a little bit of mining and going to the nether, along with defeating an ocean monument first. And then, if you have that, then make sure you have a conduit because water breathing potions are not going to save you when this is your house since I plan to leave it flooded. Except for a couple small areas, so bring a conduit. If you don't have one, and you don't have any mods that somehow provide a substitute, not that I'd recommend any, then I'd recommend holding out on this. And then, choose your building location. I recommend deep oceans, but of course, if an ocean is about 40 blocks deep, so you can see on the left side of my screen, block under the XYZ area, that's 40, so that's deep enough. And I'd avoid frozen oceans, because that can also be quite annoying to work with, with the icebergs being so deep. And then, once you have that, clear out all the kelp, clear out the seagrass, and then place down your conduit where you want the build to be centered on. I recommend doing a fully kitted out conduit, but for building purposes, I'm going to leave this only partially completed. So, go a couple blocks up, and then destroy your column, and then another block, conduit, and then build a structure around it. It can be a complete structure in order to make the conduit as powerful as possible, but personally, I'm going to leave it at this design, because I think this looks best. So, once you have that, you have underwater breathing, and then you can build the rest of it quite easily because, of course, you can float around and you have haste. With your conduit in place, it's now time to figure out how big you want the build to actually be. I set out these platforms in order to designate it since I'm going to base this off of the ocean monuments design. I have one right here for reference in case you want to pause the video. So you can see those pillars under it. I want to replicate that effect and simply make a better version of what the structure is. So, with that out of the way, I want it to be about 14 blocks away, like this. Count up if you want exact measurements, and then you can have those spaced around on all four sides, and I recommend having one on each corner as well. So get them on the corners, get them on the sides, and if you want, get some in between those side and corner ones. So you'll have a lot of plates like this. Now, I have each one of these plates. Notice these ones in between the others is an odd number of blocks, which is a side effect of making an odd number build, because the conduit is a center. So, does it look a little weird? Yes, but it's still workable. So, once you have that in, you want to make them go down into the sea floor. So, doing that, not going any further because I may or may not have had to delete a clip because I uh, bored straight into the earth. But what you want to do is make them all go down and don't add any more detailing for the time being. Since we need to get the actual build in, get the shaping in, make sure it's a livable place before we have to focus too hard on those simple decorations. With the pillars all in place, it's now time to add in some of the walls and entrances. Since underwater physics really allow you to do whatever you want, I mean, here, if I stop flying, you can see having a defined normal entrance probably wouldn't be worth the time. So, you might as well make it a little bit more open so that way you can swim around. It's not like there are really many threats underwater besides drowned. And even then, if you have your conduit, you should be able to handle them just fine. So, what you want to do is place down walls Make sure all your entrances are aligned, I notice I misplaced this one somehow. And then, with your walls like this, then you want to make a central room with the conduit in it. Make sure to adjust the conduit as need be, so that way it looks good. More or less, we're going to have rooms surrounding this inner area here. So, these walls here. And then all the way to maybe about here will be rooms, and those will not be flooded. Since that will be reserved for things like animals, so that way you don't have to maintain some presence on land. Instead, you can go fully aquatic by bringing animals down here. How will you do that? 
That's another story, probably involving leads and draining water. But either way, make sure to drain some areas and make some walls so that way you have some rooms. With our two clearly defined rooms, we have the outer room and the inner room. Then what we need to do is add a roof. However, to do that, we need to add outer details, which means we can finally decorate the pillars down below. So what you want to do first is with our copper here that I used for the flooring, you should cover it up. You can use whatever block for that for the time being. And then what you want to do is use a lot of stairs and slabs. For the inside, you might want to replace the bottom layer of the walls with prismarine bricks. It will be easier to work with on the outside most likely, and it provides a bit more texture for the wall. So make a design. I'm doing my classic basic design here, and then you go down. And you can see how that makes it look a little bit better. Of course, I'm going to add on to this, make it a bit more interesting. But since it's now protruding, then I can make a staircase go upwards. We want to have a bit of a pyramid shape, kind of like the original ocean monument. So do something like this. Might want to go to the inside and add a smaller staircase like this. Might not want to do prismarine, maybe prismarine bricks or even something else. But this is a generally good starting point for making a more interesting wall design. With the roof pattern now in place and our walls, you can see how this area would become a livable space. Although this would have to be reserved for more space intensive things such as farms, pretty hard to do underwater. Still, it's nice to have an area like this. So what I have to say here is one, if this doesn't work out for you, say it's too large, too small, and you don't want to use it for animal farming or simply do not have a need for that, then you can leave this flooded. Who knows, it might be too inconvenient for you to get all the sponges and do all the work needed in order to have everything underwater, and that's fine. But still, with this area now done, then make it all four sides, and then decide. Do you want these to be more walls here, or do you want it to be a bit more open? So something like this would be a more open design, while you could knock down the walls here in order to create what I have. Not to mention, you could turn it into an entrance into this part of the base. Later, I'm going to excavate more of the middle and turn this into a storage area, since as of 1.13, you can waterlog chests, so you can have this be a completely functional storage place. You'd be surprised what you can and cannot put underwater, since it really comes down to animals and redstone that can be tough to put underwater. With each one of these walls completed, you can see this is really coming together. So, what do you do now? Well, you have to make more walls on the inside. In order to keep this interesting, there's going to be a roof here. So, make sure to plan out a roof. So, I'm of course using Structure Gel because it's a really useful mod. I'd recommend it if you're on Java Edition. So, roof there, and then what you want to do is add some extra wool decorations on it in order to keep it reminiscent of the ocean monument. Here's a look at one right here, and this should prove pretty useful in what you might want to do. Random abstract designs, all that stuff. So you can see those, so build more walls up here, and then this structure will, will close out pretty soon. Of course, it will probably breach the top of the water, but that's okay makes it easier to get in here from a boat. So add those, make sure these walls go to the top, and figure out what you want to do with the interior here. Although, a quick little note, glow lichen can prevent water from flowing, even though it won't do so all the way underwater, because of course there's this big empty here. Still, it can be quite useful for those smaller corridors. So if you want to have dry areas, then Make sure that your doors are no bigger than 2x2 two two in any axis, so that way you can pass through them, but water won't. Now, I have these walls in here. You can see, quite detailed. You might want to pause if you want this design. Then, simple blocks up here. And then, what you want to do is determine what's flooded. Of course, you've probably been thinking about this a lot. So, I've decided to leave this area unflooded. I'm going to be making an animal pen here. 
So real quick, get yourself some carpet, whatever color works fine. So I might change it later on, but I'm gonna go with gray. If you place carpets on top, animals can't escape, but you can. So something like this would be good for preventing animals from escaping as long as you added walls. So make sure you can get in and out stairs like this. Remember, you can't swim up more than a half block. You might want to make it a little bit higher for your own convenience though. If you want to keep sheep in here, that means you need grass, which means you'll have to have open skylight. So do with that as you wish. You might want to make a dedicated sheep farm somewhere within the base or even on land. So with all that in mind, Worry about this area right now, make it look to your standards, determine if you want it flooded or not, and then we can start going down here and filling in some of the more important things like storage. Once you place down all the animals, llamas are surprisingly useful in the oceans since, well, it's flat so that way you can actually transport them. Then you need to do the upper floor. It's completely up to you what you want to do. In fact, you could potentially leave it open like this if you put some extra decorations. And personally, I'm not entirely sure what I want to do with this. So, think about what you want to do. Of course, you already know what I'm going to do because you saw the intro, but anyways, with all that handled, then you need to make sure you have an entrance and a way to get in and out. Because of course, if you're going to have an entrance up here for boats, then you need to have a way to get back up because... You know, going all the way down through the base and all the way through here, glow like in here, so that way it prevents water. Although, ironically, both areas are meant to be flooded. Still, you need to make sure that both entrances are also exits. So that way you don't have very long travel times trying to navigate through the base. Instead, you can either go out underwater or above water. For my rendition of the base, I've decided I will build another one of these towers on top. Slightly different, not going to clone it because of course I don't want to become too reliant on structure gel. So anyways, what I really have to say here is the drying process. I didn't really elaborate too much on it since, you know, oh the viewer will use sponges. Before I realized that, well, using sponges alone isn't going to solve much. So what you want to do is section it off. So I'm going to get uh, oak planks because it's right there. So make sections like these. I recommend sand for this. So this is a three by three. You can go a little bit larger and you want to section off each area like this. And then once you've done that, go section by section, dry it up and then break down the wall to the next section once two dry sections are touching. So, something like this, of course, make your areas bigger. Say this area has water, this one also has water. When I get rid of water from here, nothing happens. When I get rid of water from here, then I can break down this wall and reclaim some of my resources. So, once you do this, bit by bit, each area will become dry when you use sponges. If you do not have sponges, your only real method is either a flying machine, not worth the time for a build like this, or excessive amounts of sand. So I highly recommend rating an ocean monument for the resources anyways. With a miniature version of the same structure on top of this, now the exterior more or less is done. It's up to you whether you want to add some coral or sea grass to it. I'm probably going to add some, but it's up to you on that one. From here, what you want to do is fill out the interior of whatever you want. You can choose to not have a roof. I'm honestly pretty sure that might actually work better. So experiment with different strategies. Make sure that you use your non-flooded space as good as you can because certain things like farming and brewing cannot be done underwater. Also, here's a little example of the glow lichen. You can see right here, the glow lichen is preventing the water from flowing through, which means I can have this bubble elevator here. Get up. I can, you know, boat away, or I can go right back in. And if I need to weave through the water side for some reason, well, that's perfectly possible too. So you can see how this base is quite traversable because of course, water more or less makes it have no gravity because you swim in all directions. So with this now in place, 
Think about what you need above water, and then we can start working on this bottom portion here. With the sea grass now in place and the rest of the top, you can see that the exterior is 100% complete. So this probably looks pretty familiar to the thumbnail slash intro. So from this angle, you can see pretty large, approximately as large as a monument, although it's quite a bit taller and not as large in some other aspects. But anyways, we have the top part done. And this is pretty simple, a brewing area. I decided to not include storage, mainly because this is pretty easy to navigate around here, and also because I couldn't find a good place for it. Anyways, what you want to do now is go to your underwater portion, and then make storage. I'm not going to cover how exactly to do that because I've already made tutorials on how to do storage rooms. So I'm going to be using the basic bamboo mosaic rather than actually organizing it. So do that, line it with dark prismarine because of course that's an amazing block for this and make sure that on your ceilings you can't see the floor above. I'm going to leave this area blank mainly because there's not anything I could think of to put here but make sure you do that and make sure that your little doors here look good. Alright, so we have ourselves simple storage, although this is massive, so if you're building this then chances are this is going to be your final base because you can see the sheer size of it. Of course, you can add just structures that look like this nearby in case you need more space. But anyways, what you want to do here is make an interesting floor design. This is not as hard as it seems. I provided a circle generator in the description, and all I did is go down to a certain area, make a circle. Then I make a larger one, a larger one, and then the rest of the area becomes one final layer. So like this. Then align the edges of each circle with dark prismary. You might want to do stairs or slabs for this. And then once you have that, then it will be all nice and pretty, and then you can move on to the last step, which is very easy. All you need to do is add things like crafting tables and furnaces in the middle. If you still need more space, don't forget about the glow icon trick. Although, I'm using upside down stairs here in order to make it look pretty, so, you know, some issues come with that. Still, if you place slabs on top of this, here, getting myself some appropriate slabs, then you can make these areas nice and clean again. Since on top of every chest, I use upside down stairs to keep the pattern going. So with all this and these small areas for things like villagers, beds, brewing if you still need some, then the base is complete and you should put in the conduit if you're in creative. Once you've completed your interior, then your build is done. It's quite hard to get a full shot of it, especially for a thumbnail, hence why I'm probably going to use a texture pack there. But you can see this structure is, well, quite advanced. We have the top protruding. You've already seen a lot of this, but it contains all the essentials while still having a nice interior. You can see, added sea lanterns to the rings, put some blocks in the middle, so that way you always are prepared. Barrels here, so that way, if you have an unfortunate instance, you can always put backup gear in there. Enchanting, along with our non water loggable blocks. Don't forget to put lapis down here in order to reduce travel times. And then, once you have all of that completed, you can put a bed somewhere. Whether you want it to be waterlogged or not is up to you. You could even put villagers in here. However, I have not tested if they'll try leaving, and uh, that wouldn't go so well. So, either way, it's an interesting build, especially since it can make use of the conduit, something you don't really see that often. So, if you're an advanced player looking for a new interesting way to play the game, perhaps this is a build for you. And with that, it's the end of today's video. If you enjoyed this video, remember, please like and subscribe, it really helps me out. Either way, enjoy the rest of your day, Gearsaw out.